Welcome, 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 everyone. I'm so delighted that you're here. Uh, if you're here for your career satisfaction, self-awareness, and self-care tailored tune-up, uh, you're in the right place with me, Leanne, again. Uh, welcome, Ruth. I can see you're, you've come in. And Dagmar, hello, Dagmar. Uh, Jelena's here. Hi, Jelena. Uh, Patrick's coming in. Uh, we've got a full room here. It's great. Patrick, Pang Zhu, Annie are all coming in. So you made it. You you potentially have done the hardest thing today, which is uh, showing up here. So uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, and welcome back. Uh, if you have attended more than one roundtable, we've been on a break for two months uh, for the summer or the winter break, depending on what part of the world you're from. So welcome back. You belong here. Uh, again, my name is Leanne Reagan. Um, just give me a thumbs up if you can see me and hear me okay. The audio is okay. You can see the deck. Uh, just give me a thumbs up. Great. Thanks, everybody. Uh, and let me know in the chat, uh, is this your first round table or your second, third? Uh, just let me know in the chat. Uh, have you been with us? Uh, Jelena, hi, Jelena, first for you. Jess's first time. Great, great, great. Uh, if this is your first, this is your 10th, uh, wherever you're at, you're so welcome. Lots of first timers. Uh, um, welcome, Ionis has been here a few times. Great, 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 great. Uh, so if you are new to working with me, uh, know that I tend to work in th uh, three different areas. So one is all of those things that make uh, working in an organization really easy or really difficult, which is uh, conflict resolution skills, collaboration, change management, creativity, uh, uh, things like that under the umbrella of working better together or team building. I also work with lots of clients around digital engagement and tech tools, helping to uh, feel like you're in control of tech instead of the other way around. And I also work with subject matter experts who need to learn how to design and deliver really cool, interesting training. So that's a bit about me. Um, as we get started here, and uh, know that I'll share all of these links with you uh, in our chat, uh, and I'll also give you all the resources at the end. I'll talk about that in a minute. So if you haven't already, uh, if you're interested, if you're on LinkedIn, you are so welcome to join our uh, LinkedIn roundtable group if you want to keep in touch in between our monthly gatherings. Also, please feel free to participate, participate, participate. We have such an amazing community from all over the world here. Uh, and I know that there's lots of wisdom, lots of expertise in the group. So feel free to add your ideas, your suggestions, things that have worked for you. And feel free to ask uh, questions at any time as we uh, go through our time together today. Also, something new for the roundtable, uh, once you RSVP for a roundtable, you, you automatically become uh, a member. So know that membership is automatic and it's free. And what that means is you get access to 10 years of roundtable resources. Uh, and you also get the audio recording, the video recording, uh, you get a workbook. Uh, and I, so today is Thursday. I usually send those, I aim to send it all out on Monday. So watch for that and you'll get everything, including the recordings, uh, et cetera. Hi, Jane. Welcome. I can see you just joined. Uh, and please, please, please um, feel free to, to share the link. So I'll just put this in the chat. If you're watching, if future you is watching this on video, all the links will be down below in the video. So please share that link. It's how to join the roundtable. I'd love, love, love your support uh, in growing our community. Uh, also, uh, every roundtable, I ask for your feedback. So at the end of this workshop uh, today, I'll give you a link to give me some feedback. It also asks you to give me uh, ideas for upcoming roundtables, so what you want to see in those topics. And as a thank you for giving me that very valuable feedback, uh, I randomly draw someone's name and they win my ban boring online course. So I'll announce the winner uh, at the end of the workshop today. Okay, just before we dive in, 
uh, to our content today. I know that you probably have very well honed ways of tracking your learning uh, so that your future you can use uh, all the things that you've learned uh, in, in workshops that you take. I also have a couple of tools that I rotate throughout our roundtables. So today it is the HARP. So I will share this in the links in just a second here in our chat. So if you wish, if this is interesting for you, feel free to download that worksheet. Once you download it, it becomes editable and there's a space for you to record your highlights, to record action items that you wanna take as a result of our time together, uh, resources that you wanna particularly track and pictures because our minds do really well with images. Uh, so feel free to download that and use that if you wish. Uh, okay, I want to just um, put it over to you for a second. So feel free to say hello uh, in whatever language or languages you wish. Uh, you can say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever you wish. So please feel free to unmute for a moment. So everybody unmute, unmute, unmute. <clears throat> And on the count of three, say hello, good morning, whatever you wish. One, two, three, go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Happy to be here. Oh, thank you, everyone. Uh, so feel free to mute again. And then let us know in the chat, um, where are you? And in fact, actually, let's put, I'm just going to stop sharing for a second. Um, if it's comfortable for you, um, feel free to uh, put your camera on and just wave uh, hello to everyone. So feel free to put your camera on. Hi, Dagmar. Hi, Catherine. Uh, I was, hi, Martin. Hi, Yara. Hi, Wedian. Hi, Anidik. And if I am mispronouncing your name, if I'm butchering your name, um, please feel free to put the phonetic spelling uh, in the chat there. Hi, CH. Nice to see you. Hi, Jelena. Oh, and Annie. So great to see everyone. Thank you. Okay, let me go back here. I'm going to bring the deck back up. And if you're just coming in, um, we are, we've just said hello to everyone. Uh, and I'll just share the deck again. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay. So once again, welcome and let's dive in. So uh, here, and you should have uh, got this on the, on the agenda ahead of time. Uh, but just to note, uh, and by the way, I'm just looking at where people are. Uh, Myanmar, oh, hi, May. Uh, Martin's in Vienna, Yara's in Cairo, Catherine, Geneva. Um, Ionis is in Brussels, Christy's in Berlin, Annie's in Madagascar. Oh, I've not been there. Jess has been uh, Vienna, Wedian is Jordan, Anne is in London. Oh, I'm just so tickled that that we are able to have people from all over the world. CH is in Rome, Muthoni's in Nairobi. I will be back. I'm in France right now, but I will be back in Nairobi um, shortly. Um, Julie's in Bonn. Oh, but homesick. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I hope you feel better soon, Julie. Um, and we've got Entebbe, South Sudan, London. Oh, so great. Okay. Well, wherever this is, wherever you are in the world, you are so welcome. So today is all about self-awareness and career satisfaction, and this is based on a request from members, actually. So this whole workshop is based on what members um, said that they wanted. By the way, there's I've never had this before, but there's something in the air um, here in France that is making my eyes water. So I'm not crying. <laughs> I'm not upset, um, but please um, disregard these tears if you can see them on camera. So our roadmap for today is we're going to talk about quiet quitting and loud laboring. Let me know in the chat. Have you heard of loud laboring? That was something that was new for me. Let me know in the chat if you've heard of loud laboring. So we'll kind of locate yourself anonymously. You don't have to say um, where you're at publicly. Yeah, so it's new. Uh, <laughs> Catherine's saying no, but it resonates. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about some key indicators for a healthy team and a healthy you. I gave you the link to a survey. So if you're able to fill that team survey in, that's great. And if your blood pressure just went up because you didn't have time or 
you know, just something got in the way, um, please don't worry. So we'll talk about um, some indicators from that survey. We'll talk about some really easy things that contribute to career satisfaction. Uh, some top tools for self-awareness and self-care. Uh, and hopefully you'll come away feeling inspired. Um, and again, I'll give you the audio recording, the video recording. You'll get a workbook with all of the tools that we uh, uh, that we cover. And I'll aim to get that to you by Monday. And if you are a UN staff, if you're not a UN staff, you can just la 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 la. Uh, if you wish, this workshop counts towards your annual professional development requirement. So there's a, a, a survey, uh, not a survey, there's a form just that where you put your name and then that um, is how we count that towards your, your annual professional development. Uh, okay, so I think, I think um, loudly laboring is new for everyone there in the chat, which is great. Uh, we've got some more folks coming in. Okay, so um, I would love to know uh, what role does work play in your life? So we're diving into the content. Uh, what role does work play in your life and how satisfied are you with your career? So I'm gonna share a link. So if you just, uh, I invite you to click on that link and I will head over to that document as well. So feel free to click on that link. And it's going to bring you to something that looks like this. Um, oh, great. So so folks are already in there. Actually, I'm just going to move that. So folks, who's ever um, typing there, I'm just going to move it down here. So I love thank you so much for for being so keen. Um, and feel free to, to think about um, the role that work plays in your life. And you can do this anonymously. There's no need to um, there's no need to put a name there. If you want to, you can. Um, and here's how I'm going to suggest you can you can do text. Okay, so folks are super, yeah, thank you. The so folks, if you want to um, just uh, scroll down. And I thought, and you, you're you you're welcome to put text there if you wish. Another way to do it, and I'll show you, I'll give you an example. This is a great way if you need to, uh, if you need to find images that are, that you're legally allowed to use. Um, this is a way to do it. Well, there's many ways, but this is one way to do it. So you can go to, and th th these are the instructions here. This is how you do it. So you go to insert and then you go to image and then you go search the web. And what's going to pop up here on the right hand side is um, a uh, search bar. So I can put career satisfaction or I can describe an emotion that I'm feeling, et cetera. And then all of these uh, images pop up. And the great thing is that all of these images you're able to use. So let's just say I wanted to use this one. I would click it and click insert. And there it goes. So I'm going to pause the recording for a moment. And you have two options as, as folks are, are being very lovely and um, uh, putting text in there, feel free to do that. You can also put an image in there that reflects uh, how do you feel, um, how satisfied are you with your career and or what role does work play in your life right now? Because for some of us, it's a huge, huge important, our career is, you know, end all be all. And for others, it's more like a, a job. Oh, and, and folks, if you're typing up here, I'm just going to ask you to scroll down. So I'm going to, so who's ever typing up here, I'm just going to cut that. And I'm just going to paste it down here. So just make sure when you're in this um, document that you are um, typing down below. So I'm just going to take that out there. And... Oh, yeah, sorry. Hi, Ruse, did you have a question? I can see that you've unmuted. So feel free if you have a question, um, do that. And also if you see, you can see all the little kind of marks there. 
It means that other people are right there. <clears throat> so make sure that you scroll down and you're not going over someone else's work. So I am going to just pause the recording for a second as I give you a couple minutes to do that. Okay, so if future you was watching that, you can take a look at that document. I'll probably lock it down after this live workshop, but it will be there for you to reference. Um, and I encourage you to, wherever you're at, um, however, whichever role work plays in your life, um, however satisfied or dissatisfied you are with your career, just notice all of the variants, right? Everyone's in a different place. And if things are working particularly well for you, you may, uh, oh, Jelena's saying, could it be hay fever? My eyes, um, it could be, I've never had that before. So I don't really know <laughs> what it's like, but yeah, it's a new thing. Um, uh, so yeah, just kind of, you may also wanna think about this in the context of your team, right? Whether you may need some grace or whether you may need to give some grace to some other people in your organizations. Um, okay, <laughs> thank you for your patience with my with my tears here. Um, okay, so I wanted to share with you some of the research I did. And again, all of these resources, I'll share all of these with you. Uh, and I'm going to go through these four different categories, if you will. And there's many more than this, but this is just kind of an example. Uh, so see if any of these resonate um, for you, because I'll ask you in a moment to, to kind of place yourself according to some of these. So one is quiet quitting. Um, that's come up in the last kind of year or two, maybe two years. Let me know if that's familiar to you in the chat. Have you heard of that term quiet quitting? Uh, some of the research, and I will share these links with you. Yeah, so Catherine's heard that term. Yeah. Yeah, um, Jelaine is saying um, definitely massive turnover at work. So these are some of the, I put some links in the chat. If you're watching the video, it the links will be down below. So some of the research says that one in three of people who are under 40 are in this area. Uh, some other research says 60%, more than half of people are quiet quitting. So what does quiet quitting mean? It doesn't necessarily mean quitting your job. It can be, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Um, Rufina is saying, is prioritizing work-life balance really a form of quitting? I think it's healthy. Yeah. So uh, that's a great comment. Um, oh, and someone else is DMing me about um, maybe an allergy to fungal spores. Oh, you have this. And yes, I'm going to get some antihistamine. Absolutely. Because, yeah. Thank you. I love, I love the care and attention in our community. So um, basically quiet quitting uh, yeah, is similar to, to presenteeism, and absolutely. So it's quietly checking out. It may be that it does lead to quitting, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Uh, it's people that are rejecting this, you gotta work, gotta work, gotta work 24 seven. You know, if you haven't responded to email within, you know, five minutes or something, um, you know, that's not acceptable. Um, it's that go, 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 go culture. Never have your phone more than, you know, 30 centimeters away from you, uh, et cetera. Uh, welcome. Uh, I, and, and apologies if I'm not saying your name correctly. Welcome, Nisha. So glad to have you here. We're talking about some different um, in terms of our career satisfaction, where people are at. Uh, so if, if you are in a situation that doesn't prioritize work-life balance, people who are quietly quitting are rejecting that. They're saying, no, these things are really important. They're really healthy. And I am going to work um, more um, healthy hours and have a better, uh, a better balance. You're welcome, Nisha. Uh, oh, uh, Rosangela is is um, on early retirement. Oh my goodness, what a what a change of um, chapters in life! Congratulations. Okay, so that's one area that may or may not resonate with you. Uh, another one is loud quitting. Loud quitting. So some of the research says that this is one in five people. So twenty percent. 
these are people who are actively disengaged and they're not hiding it. So uh, they can also be people who are actively opposing, undercutting, um, you know, they're really uh, in a tough space there. And people around them can often be in a tough space because of it. Um, another one that, that was new to me was loudly laboring. Um, and again, think about if any of these resonate, because I'm going to ask you to annotate the screen in a minute. Um, and it's anonymous, so we don't know who's who. So people who are loudly laboring, they're focusing more on making sure that people think or know that they're working than actually getting the work done. So they're really big self-promoters, but not necessarily in an authentic or genuine way, but it's just really important to them that other people think that they're working hard. Um, Jelena's saying, I'm somewhere in between quiet and loud quitting, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then the other one, and this comes from the work of Miles Horton, and he was an adult educator in the um, Appalachian region of the Southern uh, US. Really interesting. I read his his um, autobiography. It's many, many years old now. Um, but I, this concept, uh, welcome Needy, so happy you're here with us. This concept really stuck with me. And he used to ride the rails with uh, hobos and so-called because of um, Hobonic, New York, apparently. Uh, and he came up with this concept of uh, at night, so so the fuel for the fire the wood was very scarce. Uh, and if you used up your uh, your wood too quickly, then the fire wouldn't last uh, the whole night and you'd be in trouble. You could be, um, you know, it just wouldn't be safe and you wouldn't be warm. If you didn't put enough fuel on the fire, then the fire would be would go out, and the same kind of thing. You you wouldn't be safe. So he talks about um, a fire in our belly, and if that fire is too high, then we're not taking good care of ourselves. We might not be um, physically well, emotionally well, mentally well. Um, it can lead to burnout, etc. That that fire, that fuel is too high. We're working too hard. If the fire is too low, that can be the quiet quitting, the loud quitting, the loudly laboring, like we're just we're just disengaged, not interested, not motivated, um, don't want to be there. So he talks then about is is your fire just right? Is it high enough that you that you are interested and passionate and motivated um, at work, but it's not so high that it's going to con consume you? So think about those four different quadrants, and then I'm going to open up the annotation here, and feel free, um, and I, it's a little bit harder if you're on a phone, but you can go to your settings and open up the annotation. You can put a little check mark, uh, you can put a, a, a star, a, a little dot, whatever you wish. So if you had to choose, this is not a scientific test, you can't get this wrong, um, you know, et cetera. Um, but feel, uh, think about, so we have someone for fire in your belly, anyone else? And you can also DM me if you're like, Leanne, the technology is just too hard. Um, you can DM me and I can put it on the screen for you. So, um, so feel free to just take a moment where do, do and maybe none of those resonate with you, uh, but if one does, feel free to put a mark there, or you can DM me and I'll put it for you. Uh, okay, we have some new messages here. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, so I have someone who's quiet quitting, so I'll put a mark there. Um, someone's saying, is prioritizing work-life balance really a form of quitting? I think it's like, so Rufina, um, oh, Angelina has, has, has responded. I think it's quitting when typically when you love your work and are super engaged, usually you put in more hours because you enjoy it. It doesn't feel like it at the expense of your private life. Once you're fully aware of needing the balance, it usually means you're not as engaged. Yeah. Often, um, quiet quitting when someone's prioritizing work-life balance and they're under that, piece of quiet quitting, it means that the workplace doesn't prioritize um, work-life balance. So they're making 
what feels to you um, un, um, unrealistic demands. They're asking too much, too many hours, too many responsibilities. So yes, it's very healthy to prioritize work-life balance. The reason why it's under quiet quitting is because that setting is not prioritizing it. So it's people that are pulling back. Um, I love the response there. Thank you, Jelena. Um, uh, Juliet is just joining us. Uh, Elizabeth is saying, Leanne, do you have any resources on how to distinguish whether the quiet quitting is due to work-life balance, work standards, lack of support, et cetera? Sometimes it's tricky to identify which is which. Yeah, so I put three resources up in the chat above. So those might be helpful for you. And I'll also put them in the workbook. So they'll, they'll be there when you get all the resources in one place. Okay, so I have another person who is in quiet quitting DM'd me, another one who DM'd me for loud laboring, another quiet quitting, uh, another DM, and then Rosangela saying fire in my belly after early retirement. Oh, nice. Okay, and then another DM. Uh, okay, uh, fire in belly. Great. Okay, so we have clear, this group is clearly uh, divided. Uh, divided doesn't, divider sounds like a negative thing, but I just mean, you know, there's a difference there. Um, clearly between quiet quitting and fire in the belly are, are the, are the, uh, the most common ones here. Uh, Juliet has just joined us. So thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take a picture of this and I'll also put it in all of the, um, in the follow-up resources so you can see this. I'm going to clear them now because in Zoom, if you don't clear them, they go on to um, the next slide. Okay, so let me know in the chat and there's no, oh, someone's saying, um, Chinwei saying, wondering if we should have a category called quietly laboring, especially when you are really delivering but not trying to push it in anyone's face. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's a great idea. Yeah, and others have as well. Okay, so I wanted to give you kind of a sense of some indicators of where you might be in terms of your satisfaction. So I, in the prep materials, I sent you a link to the survey, the team survey. And this is the same survey that I use when I am doing team building with clients and it really helps me design very, very custom team building. So it's not me coming in saying, I think you need this, Rather, it's the participants telling me where they're at. So let me know in the chat. Did anyone get a chance to fill in that survey? It's all anonymous. Did anyone get a chance? And I'll put the link in the resources. So if you didn't have time, you could always go back and take a look at that. But just let me know in the chat. Just doing a check here for time. Oh, great. Okay, so Christy did, Julie did, great. Okay, so what I did is the many, 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 so I think there's, I don't know, more, more than a thousand people. I collated for the very first time, actually, thanks to your prompting for the topic of this workshop, I collated all of the results, so from all of the teams. So I'm going to share those with you. And then we can have a discussion about that. And then after this, um, We'll, uh, we'll do one more piece and then we'll have a break. Are we good to go ahead with the results of the survey? Just give me a thumbs up if you're ready to proceed with that. Okay, great, okay. Okay, so when I show you these results, and again, they're all anonymous, right? Um, many many of them are UN teams, but um, all of them are, are anonymous. Just think about um, where are you at um, in terms of yourself? If you did the survey, um, you know, where, where would you place yourself? Uh, where would you place your team, et cetera? And thanks to those who are still annotating, I'm actually going to erase those just because they're going to go on to the next screen. So feel free to um, just pause with the annotation there. And here we go. So where is the team at now? 
So this is all of the collated um, resources. And these are all indicators of career satisfaction, engagement, et cetera. So high functioning, most people average quite a bit, very much. Um, in terms of trust, you know, same thing. Most people are average quite a bit, very much. Uh, do they respect each other? Very high, you know, almost half of the teams say very much. Again, the teams really, really vary. So this is this is the average of everyone. Does the team collaborate? Um, so 40% uh, are saying very much. Uh, do, do, do the teams communicate well? That's generally spread out between average quite a bit and very much. And is our team able to resolve problems? So the same thing. So they tend to be spread out, the averages not individual teams at all, but the average is between um, average quite a bit and very much. If you have any, oh, um, someone's asking me about the survey. Um, so I will put, it's in the introductory email that I sent. I sent a link um, with the agenda. It's also a link to the survey. I'll also send it in all the follow-up resources. So any thoughts on those results there? Just let me know, any thoughts on those results? Um, Julie's saying, does our team communicates well refer to team internal communication, external or both? Oh, that's a great question, Julia. It's usually within the team. Yeah, it's usually within the team. And so these results could dramatically change depending on, um, you know, if you're looking at your core team, um, you know, the whole organization. So folks, I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind to not annotate now, I'm just going to erase those um, because we're, we're just moving on from that. So thank you. <clears throat> uh, we have Emma coming in. Um, Needy saying it speaks to hope. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, the results are pretty high on this one, uh, you know, on average. <clears throat> Welcome Needy. Okay, I want to show you the other ones. And you can go back to these. You can look at, you know, when you do the survey, you can kind of compare them. You know, there's lots and lots you can do with this. Um, okay, so the, the previous one was on the team. Um, this one's on where are individuals at right now. So you can take a quick look at that in terms of your fit. You know, um, 60, almost 63% of the respondents said that they have a, um, a very, very good fit. The one I always draw teams attention to is if you look at the one that says, I receive recognition for my work. Notice it says 33% says very much. Hey, I receive recognition. And then if you look at the bottom one, it says I give others recognition. And um, 66 percent say very much now teams always I think every single team um, has a very big difference one team I worked with had an 800 percent difference in other words people are giving feedback but people don't don't seem to be receiving that feedback so there's a mismatch there um, and that's you'll see in a moment that's one of the most common things that teams ask for in terms of training needs is how do I give and receive feedback? Okay, um, I asked teams to describe themselves a year ago, today, and how they'd like to be perceived. And again, as we're going through this, see, you know, do, do you resonate with this? Um, how would you, how did you answer this? Or how would you answer this if you haven't taken the, the survey yet? And, um, uh, feel free to add your comments here. Julie's saying, very interesting, this mismatch between giving and receiving. Yes, every single team, every single team I've worked with says they give feedback more than they receive it. And the biggest difference was 800% difference between that. Okay, so here uh, I made word clouds um, out of these uh, uh, terms, which means I took all of the data 
and my team put it into a word cloud, which means that the bigger the word, the more frequently that word was mentioned. And the smaller the word, the less frequently it was mentioned. So the most common ways that teams describe themselves as of a year ago are energetic, teamwork, hard work, hardworking, collaborative, supportive, committed, cooperative. I just want to pay attention here to some of the comments. Um, I think Zhao is saying, I wonder if there's any difference observed between results from teams in UN international organizations and those from teams in private. Oh, great question. And almost all of my work, like 99% of my work is with INGOs and UN. So the data there that you're seeing is predominantly from that. And it would be interesting to see if it's different for a corporate. Um, Elisabetta is saying, what advice do you have when the team isn't a good fit, but you enjoy the tasks associated with your job? How to change this around when you're not in a senior position? Training, right? To do some team building, um, do some training, have learning plans that really identify um, this data. Can be, I, I work with teams to create a whole annual learning plan. Um, so yeah, th th those are some suggestions I'd make, Elisabetta. Okay, so that it was how teams described themselves a year ago. This is how they would describe their team, their team today. So relatively similar focused, hardworking, collaborative, supportive, committed was the most popular thing that they said, motivated, cohesive. And then thirdly, how would they like to be able to describe their team in a year, a year from now? So happy, supportive, efficient. So the, the words change here a bit. Uh, collaborative, motivated, focused, cohesive, effective, uh, et cetera. Uh, <laughs> pardon me. I also ask teams what um, gaps or issues or challenges do they have? So communication is a huge one and lack of things. So lack of communication, lack of team, lack of management um, comes up um, frequently in this. And then what are their team assets? Team, teamwork, communication, collaboration, leadership, knowledge, respect. Um, I did this for a UN agency one time, an entire agency. And one of the biggest um, issues that they identified was management. And one of the biggest assets they identified was management, which I thought was really interesting. Okay. And then the last piece that I'll share with you from this data are what are the skills that the team most needs? So I have these seven skills and I ask people to put them in order. So communication and communication specifically giving and receiving feedback are the top two for both. And the, actually the top three, including conflict resolution are the same. So people are saying, this is what my team needs and it's also what I need. And they're actually remarkably similar between the two. I don't often get that on individual teams, but their um, culture and change management flip um, positions between team and individual and creative, uh, actually creativity and collaboration are the same. So change uh, management and culture are the only ones that flip. So you can use this as a way, kind of a litmus, I'm going to say a litmus test, but it's not a test. Just kind of where are you at? Um, how do things seem for you? Uh, these are ways to kind of help indicate your career satisfaction. So I am going to invite us to take a break in a moment. Are you ready for a break? I'll take a um, like a 10 minute break in a few minutes. I'll do actually just a minute. Is that, does that fit for people? Just give me a thumbs up if you're ready for a break in a minute. Okay, great. So um, just before the break, I wanna say, just to remind you, I'll ask you for feedback at the end of the workshop today. And as a thank you every month, I draw someone's name from the last month's um, workshop and gift them a free band boring online meetings course. So make sure at the end, when I uh, share that link with you, that you give me the feedback. It also gives me, um, get, I, I tell you what the next month's topic is and you get to tell me what, what you want about that topic specifically. So thank you in advance for that. And as we go to break, um, once again, we've made a change. So you've automatically become a member by registering. Um, and if you're like, I 
no, I just wanted this one round table. I don't want any more. Then just, you can um, unsubscribe. That's not a problem at all. But by being a member, you get the uh, audio recording, video recordings, the workbook, not only for this workshop, but for all 10 years of uh, roundtables. So I would really, really, really appreciate it um, if you would share the link. If you can think of two people right now that you think might be interested in joining the roundtable, um, please uh, send this link to them with a little note saying, hey, you know, I, I think this is a resource you might like. I'm also going to put up a poll in just a second. I'm considering, so the round table switches times to be friendly between the Americas and Europe and Africa and Asia kind of splits both of them. So I'm really interested if people only um, take a workshop in, you, you know, in one time zone or are you, are you straddling both time zones? Because I'm considering taking the same topic and repeating it twice so that each time zone um, gets it. So I'll put that poll up in just half a sec. And then I'll also copy this if you're interested in any of the upcoming roundtables, which as a member, you'll get all of that information about. Um, our next one is October 26th and it's on chat GPT. I have been researching this um, a lot, a lot. So we'll do that. November's is on networking. So that's another topic members ask for. And then we break for December. So we'll go to break for 10 minutes. I will leave um, a poll up as we go to break. Um, so please, uh, if you can uh, uh, take a moment to fill in the poll, it's just three questions. This is the one about the time zones. So you should see it on your screen right now. So can you just let me know in the chat if you can see the poll, just confirm you can see the poll. Uh, oh, someone DM me. Oh, someone has to leave early because of it. Uh, thank you so much for coming. So appreciate it. Great. Thanks for people for filling that in. Um, okay. So um, take a break, relax, rest if you can. And I'll put the timer on for 10 minutes. We'll see you back in 10 minutes. And if you can, please share that link if that feels like a good thing to do. Thanks, everyone. Back in 10 minutes.
Okay, welcome back from your break. Um, let me know, what did you do on your break? Um, for those of you who are just coming in and wondering what the heck it might be wrong with my image, for the first time in my life, I'm having some kind of reaction. I don't know if it's hay fever or something. But I'm honestly not weeping, um, <clears throat> but my eyes are very teary in my nose. So I apologize. <laughs> I feel very, feel quite self-conscious with all of this. I'm trying not to sniff, sniff too much. Um, oh, y'all took a, a, a short walk. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Anyone else? What did you do on your break? <clears throat> Um, uh, so we've talked about so far, um, oh, Kanji checked inbox. Yes. <clears throat> so, so far we've talked about your career satisfaction and kind of indicators of where you're at. Uh, sometimes we have, may have a general kind of unease, but we don't, we can't really pinpoint that. So we went through the survey results. We talked about quietly quitting, loudly laboring, uh, we did some collaborative work online around where you're at with the role of work in your life, as well as your career satisfaction. And we're just coming back from a break. Um, Paula had a cup of tea or coffee, Julia tea, nice and a stretch. Um, oh, Anna saying hay fevery stuff often surprises us later. Oh, is that a thing in later life? Okay. Trying to recognize that aging is a privilege. So if it includes hay fever, I'll figure that out. <laughs> um, May is email and tea. Needy is tea. Uh, and climate. Yeah, yeah. Might be something there. Um, someone else DM me. They, they checked emails. Okay. Well, welcome back, folks. Uh, again, this whole workshop is based on member feedback. So I am so open to your ideas for what you would like to uh, uh, our workshop topics. We have the next few months set, but I am planning for 2024. So if you have ideas for topics that fit into that working better together, uh, tech tools, digital engagement, and training trainers, I would love, love, love to hear them. You can put them in the survey link, which I'll give you at the end of today, or you can um, put them in the chat. Um, Okay, Jimmy has to jump off. Uh, oh, uh, it's going to do a post on, on LinkedIn. That's fabulous. Yes, I love that. Yeah, if, if you want to share on LinkedIn, on other social media channels, please feel free to do that. Um, oh, and Needy's saying, enjoy the rain falling. Where are you, Needy? That it's raining. Um, makes the dry grass, dry grass happy. Nice. Um, non-drowsy antihistamine tablets. Okay. Oh, I love the care and attention of the group. Thank you. Need is in Belgium. Okay. Oh, we're kind of next door. Close. Anyways, I'm in France. Okay. So we've talked about career satisfaction. And again, based on things that um, members, when I asked them about some topics for upcoming meetings, they also talked about um, self-awareness and your reputation. So I've put those three things together in this workshop. So talked a bit about career satisfaction so far. Now we're going to go on to self-awareness and your reputation. So uh, Samson is just coming in. Uh, welcome, Samson. Thank you for coming. So has anyone uh, in the group, are you familiar with Simon Sinek's work? Or did you take the roundtable that talked about finding your why? Uh, this is uh, is Simon Sinek's work. He has one of the most popular uh, TED Talks. So, 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 so good. So when we're bundling the career satisfaction, the self-awareness and your reputation together, uh, knowing your why, I think will put you far, far ahead. Uh, if you haven't already done this in the uh, resources, I'll put a link to that round table because I walked everyone through um, how you go about this process. Uh, he has a couple of books. Um, and one of them is the find finding your why workshop, uh, workbook rather this blue one. I recommend it over the other one. It just kind of walks you through you the process as well as you do it as you're going along. So, uh, finding your why is all about, I mean, it's harder than this, but filling in these two blanks to blank, which is identifying what contribution do you give to the world? So that blank, uh, what is the impact that you're looking for? 
and again, I did a round table on this, so I'll share this. It walks you through how to do this whole process. Um, let me know in the chat, has anyone done this, uh, knows of his work and have you, um, do you know what your why is your contribution and your impact? Let me know in the chat. Um, here is my example, um, to spark curiosity and hope in order to generate a connected world of peace and possibility. So I know I'm doing my best work when I'm doing those things, right? So the contribution, I, I believe that I'm really good at getting people curious and engaged and also hopeful, right? There's so many um, pressing problems in the world, but I feel like I'm good at giving people, getting people motivated and having hope. So you'll see this is relatively broad, right? So there's a lot of things that fit underneath that. And my intention is to generate a world that is peaceful, where people feel connected, that they have a sense of possibility. Um, thank you for the DMs coming in. Um, people are responding to that. Um, uh, yes, Kanji, you'll absolutely get the recording. Yeah, absolutely. Audio and video and the workbook. So um, any examples? Can you, can you think offhand what your contribution is or what kind of impact you're looking for? And I know that's a big question, but feel free to just um, put some ideas in the chat if you have them. Um, Paula is saying, in, is this book under the perspective of bettering teams at work and more into your personal or more into your personal individual perspective? Oh, great question, Paula. It's both. Pardon me. So the idea is if we know um, how we can best serve the world, what, what our best contribution is, how we're, how we're wired <clears throat> to give our best um, contribution and get the best impact, that's really good for us as individuals. And it's really good for team development and the organization. Great question. I love that question. Um, you're so welcome. So if that has not been on your radar, I highly recommend it. It is a fascinating process. Um, and some of you may do it easier than others. I know I kind of struggled with it. So I had a colleague help me. Sometimes someone else is, is better at identifying those things than you. Um, but that might be a resource that you want to check out. And again, I'll give you the, uh, the link to the roundtable. So if you watch that recording, it, it walks you through the whole process. Okay, so um, reputation. Um, this was a real, um, you know, again, this is, we're tying this into the bundle of career satisfaction, self-awareness and reputation. So I put together these seven things um, about your uh, reputation. This is mostly professional reputation, but of course our personal reputation is, is tied in there as well. So I'd love to know, um, how do you currently manage your reputation? Is this an issue for you? Do you have tools to do that? Uh, I think that is a really good place to start around how you are currently managing your reputation. So any, any thoughts on that? How do you currently manage your reputation? And I've just realized I sat back down after the break without a clinic, so I might need to whip off and um, grab that, but um, I had a DM. Um, oh, I love this. This person's being very honest. I have no idea how I'm currently managing that. <laughs> I love your honesty. Thank you. Anyway, any, it, you know, one of the things that's so great for me about the round table is I love the questions, and the prompts that I get, because it wasn't something I had I know I was doing it, but I hadn't really sort of articulated it. So if you haven't thought about this before, um, uh, don't, uh, don't feel bad. And just again, another um, reminder about the annotation. Um, we're just, uh, we finished that piece on the annotation. So I'm just going to clear that off. Um, and if, by the way, <laughs> I once had someone in a public setting annotate, let's just say, um, an anatomical part of the body that um, that we don't usually share with people. So you can lock this down uh, if you're doing uh, both in Teams and Zoom. Um, okay, someone else um, DM me said, true, also, I don't know how to manage my reputation. I'm just living. 
<laughs> um, uh, Paula's saying three results obtained at work. Nice. Okay. And Jelena's saying, um, never thought of having to manage it. It's what it is. I understand managing to mean holding back. Oh, and I refuse to hold back and diminish my qualities, especially in the UN when there's so much nonsense and fake behavior. Okay. Yeah. I would say this is from my perspective, how I view this, this is not, this is definitely not about holding back. Um, Julia saying, I guess besides good work and delivering, one has to let others know about it as well. Yeah, well, let's continue. So um, hopefully you'll find some good tools here. So the first one is to think about what are you currently doing in terms of your reputation? And then the second thing is to think about what are indicators of a good reputation? So if you presumably, you know, uh, people who are well and healthy, you know, uh, psychologically well want to have a good reputation. So what what would indicators of a good rep, uh, reputation be? And this this might, um, some of these would, might be similar and some of these might change based on your particular field you're in. Uh, a DM says fact checking and collaboration on work, agenda, collective mistakes, success, um, uh, being reliable, says Delena. Uh, Julie, I feel that I resist managing my reputation. I feel that my work and relationship should stand on their own, but I have realized it's not that simple. Yeah. Oh, and, and by the way, this is all about being authentic. It, it, this is how I see it. it. This is not about trying to massage or manipulate um, your, your reputation. It's all about being authentic. Um, yes, yeah. So colleagues come to you for advice. Yeah. So when I was brainstorming, these are some of the things um, that I came up with, like, how do I know uh, what my reputation is, or if I have a good reputation? And again, these will vary um, based on your field of work. Some of them will be similar. Um, are you asked to collaborate on things? Are you asked to join teams? Do people ask you for input? Um, are you helping others feel like they fit, belong? You're helping other people learn and grow. Um, are you receiving any kind of recognition? Are you receiving positive feedback? Are you receiving leadership opportunities, if that's relevant? Um, what kind of feedback are you getting? Um, are If you're a consultant, um, or in that realm of work, are you getting referrals? Are people saying, hey, I think you'd be great to do this job. And uh, if you do hire clients, potentially if you're a consultant, are clients rehiring you, right? So those are some examples there. Um, others have said, um, Carmela has said consistency. Juliet is saying feedback received sometimes has to be requested. Yes. Jelena is saying trusted and respected by colleagues and management for your attitudes, results, deliverables, approach. And when they come to you for personal and professional advice, um, someone said in a DM, people trust you. Yeah. That's one of the things that I measure on that survey. Absolutely. Okay, so we want to think about how are you currently managing your reputation? What kind of indicators are you looking for? And then have you actually articulated what you want your reputation to be? So uh, are you, if, if being a team player is really important to you, for example, have you articulated that? And, and are you really working on that particular feature? Um, Paula's saying, I used to think the same, and this is in response to um, the reputation with output at work. Um, I feel if I deliver quality work, then for the most part, my reputation is sorted. And Paula re replied, I used to think the same until I realized that many times lots of my work results went unseen or others took credit for it. Yes, that can ab absolutely happen in some organizations, some teams. Okay, and then number four, if you've articulated what, you're, what you want your reputation to be, is there any gap? between what you want it to be and what it is, right? So these are kind of big questions to think about and often affect your career satisfaction, right? All of these things are, are linked together. <clears throat> um, okay, and then I think one of the uh, really key things with your professional re reputation is it's about give and take, right? So how can I be, sometimes we, we're, because things can get really competitive and there's lots of stress and et cetera in the workplace, we just focus on what we can take, uh, what can we give, right? So for example, this round table is a really important part of my professional reputation. I don't charge for it. It's something that I do to build up the, you know, 
what's really important to me, which is the concept of learning and development. And we can all learn, we can all grow. So what are the things that you are doing in terms of, um, of giving? And how can you be of service? So for me, you know, I'm trying to build community through the roundtable, through the LinkedIn roundtable group, the Facebook group. Um, I have um, a Google Doc uh, personally that has, I live in Kenya. So all these things to do, see and do in Kenya. So when people are new, because there's so much um, movement when people are new to Kenya, um, I offer to share that document. Um, and I also convening is really important to me. So bringing people together. So I have a couple of, of uh, women's groups that I've, I've, um, I've organized uh, the goddesses, we call ourselves the goddesses, we've met for, I think, 17 years now, a really, really long time. And I love to dance. So in Kenya, I have a dancing queens WhatsApp group and anyone who likes to dance um, can join and we try to get out, you know, once a month or so. So think about how you can be of service and then very pragmatically, I'd love to know, does anyone in the group uh, who's online, does anyone have a Google alert for your name? Does anyone have a Google alert for your name? So with Google, you can Google, you can Google this, uh, and you can put on a Google alert so that any time your name is mentioned online, um, that notification will come to you with the link saying where that's being, um, you know, where you're being talked about. Um, so it's free. <laughs> Julie's saying it's a terrifying idea. <laughs> Um, it's a really great link though to your reputation, right? If people are talking about you online, you probably want to know about it. Now, if you happen to have your culture's equivalent of a name like Bob Smith, like a very, very common name, it can be a little bit more difficult. But Google Alerts work on what's called Boolean search. So let's just say your name was your cultural equivalent of Bob Smith, a very, very common name. And there happens to be a Bob Smith who runs a coffee shop. You can do a Google Alert for Bob Smith minus coffee. And then Google will not send you any of those alerts um, about that particular Bob Smith. So you may need to kind of um, play around with this a bit so that you're getting the correct results, but it is fabulous. It's a really, really great um, resource. Um, Jelena is saying, great idea. Nisha is saying, no, but that's interesting. And saying, I work in mental health. These worlds are challenging. Absolutely. Yeah, some of, some folks, um, yeah. And some of you, may need to manage your professional reputation and be very careful about what you put out publicly based on um, people you may be working with, etc. Okay, so we are ticking along. I love your comments, suggestions. If you have other ideas for about managing your reputation, um, please feel free to put that, uh, to put those in the chat. Uh, and then uh, I'd like to head into the last piece, which is our self-awareness and self-care piece. Um, and I'm very aware we're just putting uh, just putting a little toe in here. We're just touching the surface of these. But when I send you out the resources, feel free to dive more deeply into any of these topics that really piqued your interest. Okay, self-awareness and self-care. So um, I did a round table on rewards and recognition. So in the resource package in a workbook, I'll put a link to that um, if you weren't able to attend that. And I also, every January, yeah, every January, I do a round table on how to design a, work, a learning plan. So that can be really, really helpful for self-awareness as well as self-care. Uh, so I'll put links um, to those and those are round tables you may wish to, to take a look at if you haven't already. And then based on um, our lovely community, when they talked about this self-awareness and self-care, I thought hmm, I've been in the learning and development field for 35 years, something like that, long time. So I thought I'd kind of challenge myself to come up with 10 tools that really, really, really had a big, big impact for me on self-awareness and self-care. 
So the three that are highlighted um, are the ones that I'll talk about briefly. And the other ones, if those are of interest to you, I'll put links in the workbook and you can dive, um, you can dive into those. So um, I'll show you the Covey grid, I'll show you the will skill, and I'll show you the amygdala in a moment. But ambiguity, learning how to deal with ambiguity, massive. So I have a survey on that. You can measure your tolerance for ambiguity. Um, understanding your motivation style, that's been huge for me, for my self-awareness. And of my people, of clients and participants I work with, that's been really, really helpful. Um, life lenses, that's an assessment that I've designed. Uh, it's online, you can take it for free and it looks at what comes onto your radar easily, naturally and comfortably and what flies below your radar because it's not important to you. Um, habit formation. Oh my goodness. I've done a lot of research on that and understanding how to form posi positive, healthy habits has been great for my self-awareness. Um, giving and uh, receiving feedback, game changer, absolute game changer. Um, grit, understanding what your grit level is. In other words, when things go sideways, what is your natural reaction? Are you tenacious? Um, uh, et cetera. That's, that's been a huge help. And then work-life balance. Um, I have some break cards. I run a UN course on work-life balance and I also created a laughter clip. So I'll, I'll share all of those with you, but I wanted to just spend our last couple of minutes before we close on three of those tools that I've highlighted there. So this one here, and let me know if you've seen this before, the urgent, not urgent, important, not important. This is often attributed to Stephen Covey, but it was actually um, a former president of the United States, Eisenhower, who came up to this. So you always seen this, yes. So I, if you've seen this before, this, any, and if you haven't either, this can be a really helpful way to increase your self-awareness around where are you spending your time? And I know that some of you have more control over your time than others. Um, uh, welcome, Cynthia. Thank you for joining us. Uh, but the quadrant that is often the most strategic, interesting, has the biggest impact is also the quadrant that is hardest to work in. And that is doing things that are not urgent, but they're important. And it's what you're doing right now, right? It's learning. So kudos to you for getting into that quadrant right now. Nisha saying, will you be sharing the guiding questions under the reputation management tool? Yes, everything in the in the deck, it will I'll I'll share with you. Absolutely. So you can go back anytime and look at it. Uh, so you may wish to even even uh, you can do this digitally or just draw a quadrant. And as you go through your days, maybe do this for a day or a week. And as you're doing tasks, just put a check. Is this task uh, urgent and not important? You know, it would be check in that box. And it gives you a really interesting insight uh, into and self-awareness into how you're spending your time. Okay, the other tool I wanted to share with you briefly is this will skill matrix. Um, has anyone seen this before? This is so, this has been so, so helpful for, especially if there's a conflict, um, is this an issue of someone's skill level? Or even if myself, if I'm struggling, it's like, oh, is this an issue of skill? Like I need to learn something more about a task I'm trying to do? And, or is it issue of my will, of my motivation? So, uh, and when I'm working with teams, I often use this tool as well. So sometimes we need to do some skill building and sometimes we need to do some motivation and sometimes we need to do both of those things. So you can link this also to your career satisfaction, right? Because if we're not skilled and we're not motivated, that has a direct impact on our career satisfaction and our probably our mental health as well. So another super, super simple tool you can use to increase your self-awareness. And then the last one is amygdalas. So on the count of three, if everyone, if you can unmute, um, unmute, unmute, and say the word amygdala. So say the word amygdala, one, two, three. Amygdala. 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 Okay. Amygdala. 
much. Thank you. You now know the Greek word for almond. So amygdala is how you say almond in Greek. And I've given you a link there to a worksheet. What's really interesting about our amygdalas is information comes into our brain. It goes to our amygdalas. Our amygdalas make one of two decisions. Can I eat it? Or is it going to eat me? If our amygdalas decide it's going to eat me, it means I'm anxious, ashamed, I'm upset, I'm in conflict, I'm embarrassed, you know, one of those things. And then our amygdalas, our almonds, grow to be the size of walnuts. They get they get much bigger. Welcome, Jennifer. Thanks for joining us. And we, we're not using our executive functioning. If our amygdalas decide I can eat it, that's the equivalent of I'm calm, I'm safe, I'm okay, everything's fine. Um, and then we can use our prefrontal cortex, which is where executive functioning, strategic planning happens, things like that. When our amygdalas decide it's going to eat me, uh, then our amygdala, we, we start using the, the reptilian part of our brain, the oldest part of our brain, is, which is what we have in common with, with reptiles. So there's a worksheet there. Um, feel free, you can click on that. And I, I refer to this as massaging amygdalas, right? So how can I massage my amygdala? How can I massage your amygdalas if we're working together? Uh, and what, what makes amygdalas flare up, you know, grow to be the size of walnuts um, and prevent us working well together? So you can um, put some ideas there. I'll also expand the worksheet. Um, oh, no worries, Jennifer. Um, absolutely happy that you were able to switch computers and, and be with us, continue to be with us. Uh, so feel free to look at some of those ideas. I've, I've hidden the previous responses, but I'll unhide those. Um, and you could spend a couple of ideas thinking, okay, you know, what makes me feel relaxed and calm and competent and what makes me flare up and get anxious and upset, um, et cetera. And that, my friends, my colleagues, my rabble rousers, my change makers, um, brings us to the end of our time together. So we've just got a couple minutes left. Um, these are all the things that we talked about. Right? We talked about quiet quitting, loudly laboring, etc. We talked about that survey. So some indicators to really um, reflect on and think where are you at in those pieces. Um, some easy things to contribute to your career satisfaction. We did those tools. Um, we talked about three of the tools there, the uh, Covey grid, um, the amygdalas, et cetera, the will skill matrix. Uh, so hopefully you're feeling a little more um, settled with your career satisfaction and self-awareness and self-care. Um, and uh, remember that if you are UN staff, and you want to have this count towards your annual um, professional development, you just need to fill in the, um, the link. So uh, be, I encourage you to be kind to your future self and take action. You know, you may wish to talk to your colleagues, your team about those, um, uh, about those uh, team, uh, uh, that survey there, you can take that survey if you wish, um, etc. Uh, you may wish to reflect on your own career satisfaction, um, where you're at with the quiet quitting, um, loudly laboring, um, fire in the belly, etc. You may wish to look at that roundtable about finding your why. And if that isn't something you've already done, and then also reflect on your reputation, is there a gap between what it is and what you want it to be, etc. So as we wrap up today, I just want to say a really big thank you. Um, I'm so, so grateful that you, um, that you chose to spend time with us today. It really means a lot. Um, I'll share the, uh, the link to join. So you're already automatically a member having signed up. So please, if I can ask, um, please share that link with a couple of colleagues. If you can do that right after our call, just put a little note for people you think might be interested. The joining link is there. Um, our next roundtable is on the 26th. 
And I put a link in the chat to the workshop description. So it's already up um, and it's on chat GPT. Um, I've had so much fun getting ready for that workshop. Um, and then I also put the other upcoming date. So um, November 16th, we'll also meet. Um, and then that'll be a wrap for this year. Uh, I want to say congratulations to Shirley S. I'm not sure she's on the call today. Um, but I mentioned that um, if you fill in the round table, uh, or sorry, if you fill in the feedback sheet, which I'm going to share with you right now, um, you get entered um, to win a free um, band boring online meetings course. Uh, so I always pull from last month's uh, feedback givers. So Shirley won this week, so uh, this month. So if you fill in that form, that Survey Monkey form, I've just put it in the chat, um, then you'll be eligible to win next month. And uh, know that um, if you, uh, now that you're a member, you'll get the audio recording, video recording, you get the workbook, you get access to eh, all 10 years of responses um, or roundtables rather. Um, I mentioned the UN, uh, uh, oh, let me just make sure I set that to, yeah. So the UN attendance sheet is right there. I put it in the chat. And uh, November's uh, workshop is called Navigating the Chat GPT Roller Coaster How to Harness These Powerful AI Tools. Uh, so that's coming up. And also know that all the videos, um, all the recordings are time stamped. So if you want to go back to a particular portion, you just click on that and it will take you immediately to that portion of the, uh, of the video because I know your time is precious and if you're looking for something really specific. And if you're interested, um, you want to explore the possibility of me working with your team around team to team building tech tools or training of trainers, um, please get in touch. I would love to chat with you. Uh, you can get more information on the services, uh, services that I offer at this link here. And thank you. Thank you. Stay well, stay safe, stay creative. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the hard work you're doing. And I hope to see you next month. I'll stop the recording here. Um,